the black communities have become less educated mm-hmm. because of affirmative because action. of affirmative action, and yeah. and and that's not just you know that's not just DJ saying that black students who would be classified in the fifth percentile of education standards get accepted more than white students who are in the highest percentile of academic standards. And they're declining because now there's no more, there's no sense of drive. There's no motivation no, because there's, there's no standard to meet. I can just get in because I'm black. I, what do I have to read this book for? What do yeah. I have to, one plus one? And then one. you got parents telling their kids that. Hey, don't worry about it. You don't got to do that shit. You're going to get in anyway because of this. And that's fucking bullshit and it's wrong. And that's the real racism. And dude, they want people to believe that because if they believe that, then we create a situation of dependency and we create a situation of division and uh, resentment amongst the races, which helps the people in power. What's up? Man, man you're getting a little tan. Bro, I've been doing these rucks. Yeah. Like, like dude, in the heat. I was just talking to Jason McCarthy from Go Ruck a little bit ago. And, uh, I was like, bro, I, I think today was day 130, one, 130 of consecutive It's so rucks. crazy. Like, dude, I remember when you got that fucking ruck. Like, yeah. it's so crazy that 130 days have passed already. Man, it feels like 1,030 to me, dude. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> like, I'm starting to hate that fucking thing. Yeah. I wake up in the morning because it's the first thing I do when I wake up. And, uh, you know, dude, my body, you know, I'm fucking, I'm not young anymore, man. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm young. I might look young. You're young enough. Yeah. I'll just say that. <laughs> That's right. I might look young and sexy. Right? <laughs> Everybody clap, right? Uh, thank you. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, but man, I'm not, you know? And, and these things are taking a little bit of toll on me. But dude, honestly, the mental benefits of it have been so amazing and I enjoy it every single day. And no matter how uh, anxious I might be when I wake up, because dude, when you're doing big things, you know, it's, it's kind of normal that you wake up with a little anxiety, right? You mm. got a whole bunch of ass to kick today and you're not sure if it's going to be you that gets your ass kicked. So, you, you know, that can you, happen. Yeah, you wake up, you're like, fuck, all right. Yeah. And uh, one of the things that's helped me very much so, I think, uh, especially over the last year and a half where I've been working through this, this major injury that I've come back from, is getting in the mindset of attacking the day. Mm. You know, the first word I think about when I wake up is attack. Mm. And, and then when I back it up with the, the ruck for an hour, right? I get done, dude. I'm an hour into my day. I've already accomplished something that most people aren't going to do their whole day. The first hour. Yeah. Right. Oh. And, and it's just a great way to set the momentum off. And uh, I, I really enjoy it. And it's hard to feel stress when you're that fucking tired at the end of an hour of that. Yeah. So I yeah. like it a lot. That's real. And it's not like you're just like simply throw the ruck on and you're going on a straight fucking flat plane. No, we're here you, in Missouri. You, you, you got, got, you got some fucking heels, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> we got, uh, we've got lots of ups and downs, man. Just yeah. like life. Yeah, no, that's that's fucking awesome though, man. <clears throat> well, I do got a lot of cool shit. Uh, do you think we'll about. make it past the censors this time? Oh, <laughs> that's a great point to bring up. Yeah, yeah. What happened yesterday? Um, well, you know, I think that. Hold on, wait, wait. Is that a new? Is that a new can? Yeah, it is a new can. Um, Damn, it looks good. It does look good. It's not an ad either. I bet it tastes even better than it looks. It tastes like orange, delicious, <laughs> orange sunrise. <laughs> Listen. Fuck, man. It looks good. It is good. Um, you know, look, dude, this is not This is the second time we've ever had a, a real issue with censorship. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first time was whenever we did the BLM podcast yeah. in June of 2020. The Black Square episode. Yeah. And uh, I don't even know what the problem was with this last one yesterday. I'm assuming it was the affirmative action points that we were making. Um, but that's really indicative of the larger problem at hand. And Mm. I really want to talk about that for a minute because I think people need to understand what's actually going on and that this isn't just like somebody complaining about their traffic being throttled or something like that. Like when you really think about the entire operation of censorship that's been in place since 2020, when they started with the COVID nonsense, um, we have these platforms, right? We have Instagram, Meta, we have Google and YouTube, we have Twitter, which now apparently is close to being free speech, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we have some other ones like Rumble. You know, We are gonna start uploading the full videos onto Rumble because of this issue that we're having with YouTube. So if you guys wanna use that platform, it'll always be there. Pretty confident they're not gonna fuck with us. 
Uh, if anything, we're going to yell that for not being extreme enough. Exactly. You know, uh, <laughs> these guys are pussies. Man. Yeah, right. <laughs> like, so, so it, you know, it is what it is. There's ways around it, you know, and we still have this platform that we've built that we're getting ready to launch the new MSCEO project on. Um, so like the kind, I'm not worried about them censoring me. I knew back when I started Andy Graham that they were starting to censor. And that's why I started. I say that. That's the whole reason you started right. it. Because I was getting censored for profanity in my captions and like heavily, heavily censored. And I'm like, man, if they censored for this, where is this going to lead to? And so that's why I started the Andy Graham. I started doing my posts on my email list so that like I could have access to my data have ha- had they chosen to delete me, which they still may. Yeah. Um, and that was the whole reason. So I thought this through a long time ago. So I'm not really worried about that. But I, I do want to explain the bigger picture just in case you're not understanding what's happening because what we learned over the last three years especially with the twitter uh ownership exchange and then the subsequent twitter files right um we learned that and mark zuckerberg said this on joe rogan that the three-letter agency specifically the fbi is actually dictating what boundaries are allowed when it comes to free speech, up to including deleting people's accounts and deplatforming them just because they're speaking of something that is outside the allowable speech. Mm-hmm. And allowable speech is not the same thing as free speech. And free speech is the reason that we even have a, a country at all. And when we talk about what is actually trying to be accomplished, it's not just censoring of the strong voices. It's not just the censorship of people who have an opinion that might be outside the allowable opinion, right? And they've gotten around this with Section 230 and saying, oh, well, it's a private business and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it is, except um, the government in this country has never shied away from deregulating or creating uh, a fair system when someone has created an effective monopoly around a certain area. Mm-hmm. You know, they deregulated the telephone industry in the, in the 1980s. There's been all kinds of, of situations where companies have begot, gotten to be so powerful and so strong that the government has stepped in and said, we got to break this up because it's, it's becoming a problem. But the reason that's not happening now is because the government is actually working with these companies and they're exactly. using it as an extension of their power play. And so, When we really understand what's going on, this is why I make fun of the the Antifa people because they don't really understand what fascism is. Well, Mm -hmm. what fascism is is what is actually happening in this country, um, but it's not coming from the right. It's coming from the left, and it's coming from the globalist community. It's coming from the biggest companies in the world. It's coming from our government, and it's coming from the social media platforms and the traditional media platforms. And they're all colluding together to craft a narrative AKA a false reality that is not comprehensive when it comes to the facts of the matter, right? So we have this scenario now where they have used bots and people are confused on this. Like if you had a room full of 10,000 phones and they all had a thousand fake accounts on it and you had the ability to program these bots to go on a dissenting views page and report the page to get it taken down or to troll the comment section and bully them or to prop up the opinion of, let's say, an Alyssa Milano, right? Who's Mm -hmm. been a very loud social justice warrior. Whether you agree with her or not, that's not the point. The point is they use this tool to prop up the people that are on their side and to tear down the people that are outside the boundaries of the allowable speech. And when you really consider what they do when they target people like me, or they target Tate, or they target like, you know, Trump, or any of these people that speak, what they're doing is they're, sh- they're flexing their muscles on you, not on me. Right. They're flexing their muscles on you. And they're trying, and it works. They're trying to intimidate all the other content creators, right? My income is not made through social media. My income is not made through this fucking show. My income is not made through posting. I Like, I do not give a fuck, okay? It makes no difference to me, all right? I could say whatever I want, but they also know that a lot of people depend on that, mm. all right? So we have, they have created this scenario where they attack the people who speak 
who get the loudest or get the most powerful, they deplatform them, censor them, create a situation where they can't be heard, seen, or they can't say things. And then it intimidates the rest of the content creators from even talking about it. And you, you, you have to think about this from multiple angles, okay? The first thing is, is that's a bad thing because it squashes any dissenting opinion, even if that opinion could be true, mm -hmm. right? So like there's, and dude, we know this. How many people text you, bro, real talk, how many people text you or DM you with big platforms and say, oh, I love the show, bro. You guys keep speaking the truth, blah, 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 blah. But you don't see them say shit a because shit I have a shit ton of a shit ton. Them, okay. And you all know all their names, mm -hmm. all of them. All, all the people you follow, they all DM me and say, bro, I'm so proud of you for not giving up. Keep Thanks for fighting up. a good fight. But then they don't say a fucking word. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I want to point something out to you. Those of you guys who, who use people's businesses and products, support the people who stand up for you with their voice because they get fucking hammered day in and day out. How many issues have we had in the last three years? Oh my gosh. Dozens <laughs> upon dozens upon dozens of major issues where people have been had to be arrested, somebody broke in my house, like... I don't talk about these things because I don't want to scare people, but this is the reality of what we've been through. And so when you guys have these people that you admire that stand up for you and you're using like a competitor's business product or something, you should probably reconsider. What did that person do for you? Mm -hmm. Now that's a whole nother point. Okay. But it does irritate me because yeah. I have all these people that are like, oh, and then I see them like using somebody else's shit or whatever, you know, like you guys, we have to all be coordinated here for this to work. And whether it's me or someone else, Buy their shit if they're standing up for you. I don't give a fuck. You don't have to buy my shit. Right. But my point is, is that we should be supporting the voices that stand up for your rights. And we have been one of those voices. I'm very confident in that. In fact, I think one of the things that I'm most proud of in my entire life is that during the hardest time that I've been alive in terms of societal rejection, we had our fucking balls hanging the fuck out mm. the entire time. And I'm proud of that. Yeah, big okay? balls. Big balls. Yeah, that's right. So, um... So when we think about this entire play, they're, they're intentionally censoring people to create silence amongst you all, all right? And you guys fall for it because you're like, oh, I don't want to get canceled. I don't want to get this. I don't want to get that. But they can't cancel all of us. In this whole three years, there have been so many people trying to encourage you guys to join in. And because you won't join in, they're getting their asses beat, okay? And it's getting old. And eventually, you won't have any voices that stand up for you because, dude, you're not joining in. Like, all I want is for you guys to join in. Just join the fuck in. That's it. Like, I'll keep doing this if you join in. But if you don't join in, I'm going to go be a rich motherfucker like I am and, and chill. Okay? And they can come take whatever they want from you. They ain't going to take it from me. I'll move. I'll go somewhere else. We're trying to fight for you guys. Yeah. We need you to speak up. Because this play that they're running is a creation of a false reality. Okay? So it's not just about squashing the dissent of the opinions that they hold, but it's also about dumbing down the environment of the United States citizens to a point where they become dumber so that they are easy to control, okay? And this is why when you go on YouTube, bro, you have all this ridiculous content, this clickbait content. Oh, I stacked 75 Oreos together in 15 minutes and it has 50,000 fucking, you know, million views, right? And the dude makes a million dollars on the fucking one video. And we have this going over and over and over and over. And everybody thinks it's great because they're getting paid. But the reality is we're losing the conversation of the shit that really matters to us. They're dumbing us down through the censorship by creating avenues that we are allowed to make content in that are meaningless, right? Oh, I ate 75 boogers in 60 minutes. And I didn't puke. 40 million views. <laughs> Here's a million bucks. You see right. what I'm saying? Right. Like, bro, they're... We're dumbing, they are, we are dumbing ourselves down by allowing them to censor us. Because that's what we click. That's and, all we got to click on. And, and dude, the, the, the dangerous part about it is, is that what's going to happen is, is that you guys are going to, you guys listening, watching, are going to find yourselves in a room with nine other people telling you that the sky is purple. Yeah. Because the motherfuckers have been screaming that the sky ain't purple and it's blue. They kicked us out the room. Yeah. You know, and so, I mean, it's a, it's a very, very dangerous thing, man. It's a dangerous thing. I think what I'm proud of is like no matter all the shit that we've been through for the last three and a half, almost four years. No one can take it away from us. Well, not only that, but we, we keep going. You know what I'm saying? It's just like yesterday. We had a show get taken out yesterday. Here we are on a fucking Friday recording this show for you guys. Yeah, DJ was supposed to be at home with his pregnant wife. 
Doing you know some, what I'm saying? Yeah, practicing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> trying to, trying to, trying to maybe get it to slide yeah, out. That's huh? what I'm saying, man. Yeah. But hey, but no, but, I'm, but the, it's necessary, and I and I truly believe it's an obligation for me personally. So, I, I do too. You know, I do too. Look, man, my grandfather fucking fought on D Day. Okay, he fucking fought on the beach of Utah, in France, and got and fucking survived. He got killed six months later. Yeah. But like, bro, if that 20 year old kid can do that shit, you, you ain't shutting me the fuck up. No, OK, no. that's that's reality. But, uh, you know, the reason they're able to do this, guys, is because not all of you are using your voice. Not all of you are standing up. And, bro, when are you going to start busting the balls of your other content creators who just make this bullshit? Fuck. They act like this shit isn't happening, dude. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like completely oblivious. They're just no. They know what's going on, and we know they know what's going on because they message us. Talk about it. Yeah, man. It's frustrating, dude. Like you guys should be busting their balls and saying, "Hey, when are you going to grow up here and stand the fuck up for what's going on? When are you going to speak on what's going on in the country?" Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then you should follow up with participating in it. Like, dude, a lot of us. There's a small handful. Uh, of about probably a hundred people on the internet who have just been relentless about bring about fighting this, and dude, it's just it's not enough. No, it's not enough people. Like, and, and dude, are we making some wins or some um, things happening? Yeah, for sure. Are people awake? For sure. Is things is the is the pendulum swinging back? For sure. But we have to come to a point where we say no fucking more. Okay, and that's where we need to get to. And we need to get to that right now. And if we don't, you're going to see this censorship get a hundred times worse over the next 18 months. Your shit will be censored. You'll have these COVID warnings of, around something else, right? Mm -hmm. Misinformation. Like, dude, look what they did to Becky Weiss's fucking Instagram, who works here at First Form, and she's a part of Gays Against Groomers, right? Like, she actually goes to events and, like, argues with these mm -hmm. people. Um they shut her page down about talking about, like, we don't want grown men shaking their balls in front of little kids' faces. They shut her page down for yeah, them. Yeah. Like, dude, what does that say? What does that say about the people who are running the fucking place? If they don't want you talking about that, why? What do they believe is okay? Mm -hmm. Right? And, dude, you know, you guys like to talk about, you know, maybe not you guys, but a lot of people like to talk about this QAnon shit like it's all bullshit, right? And, and, you know, these kids, these people molesting little kids and human trafficking and all this shit. And they make they, they make it seem like a quote unquote crazy conspiracy theory. Well, why would they be defending pedophilia? Mm -hmm. Why are they defending it so hard? Why, why would they why would they be trying to hide the perpetrators who, you know, why is Ghislaine Maxwell the only person that's ever been convicted of trafficking human beings to nobody? Right. Okay, so we're wh like, dude, this, we're, the shit is a lot worse than what most people realize. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of people who are, in my opinion, and this is speculation, probably fucking pedophiles making decisions about our country and trying to hide and then in a hurry to normalize all this shit because they know the truth's going to come out. And if it's normalized, they can't really be held accountable to it. Mm -hmm. So that's why they keep pushing this envelope further and further and further and further to, to, to like irreprehensible, unacceptable shit. Yeah. Okay? And, and dude, when you guys just sit there because you're afraid you're going to lose your content distribution and say nothing, bro, that makes you complicit in it. Yep. You know, like, uh, it's frustrating, dude. Yeah, dude, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Did you see the shit with uh, Mel Gibson coming out with the movie? He's like producing this like documentary film. I, I briefly saw that. Yeah. I didn't like talking about exposing just that, like really? the, the the yeah the child trafficking shit inside of Hollywood and all of that. It's gonna be very interesting to see what happens to him. But again, like there's another voice, there's another person that's trying to stand up. And what they do to him for talking about all this shit? What they do to him? They fucking outcast him from fucking Hollywood, bro. No more movies, no commercials. When's the last time you seen Mel Gibson in anything, bro? Most people, you know what I'm saying. So it's like. It's very obvious what they do to, to those people. Why, who why would you outcast someone that talks about protecting children from predatory adults? What's so wrong about that? Why would you defend grown men showing their genitalia to children in a school environment or in, a, in any environment? How is that inclusive to anyone? How, how, <laughs> how is it okay 
that grown men in New York City in the Pride event this past week are walking around butt fucking naked, dude, and in front of children. How is that okay? Like, what what is it going to take? I always kind of thought, like, okay, dude, that'll be the line. This, the line yeah. will be the pedophile shit, yeah. but it ain't because you guys still ain't talking about it. And who are you afraid of? Who are you fucking afraid of, dude? <laughs> like, I talk about this shit every day. You can't just express your opinion. Like, dude, I know it's scary the first time, but it's like anything, dude. You, 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 you know, once you do it the first time and you realize that everybody's like with it, now all of a sudden you have this new power and you're no longer a slave to their fucking intimidation. Confidence. You, dude, listen. And, and the shit can be fun. The fucking tide <laughs> has turned. Yeah. The wind has changed directions. It is blowing our way, the way of common sense, the way of actual America. And dude, you guys got to join in or they're going to fucking punish everybody who's speaking up in a way that like, it, and if they get the power back, if they somehow get the momentum back, they'll kill those people. Mm-hmm. So anyway. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you this, Andy. Not, to, not, not because we need more enemies, right? Um, oh. But, but you're, if you were president today, right now, how exactly would you like, what, what's the retribution on that? Right, like, like, do you? I think we would you calculate it. up all that no. that eight to ten percent. I think we would flip the tax break over to small businesses that don't do online business and give them a fucking tax break for the next ten years, and make the fucking internet pay their fucking share of tax to even out to competitive level over a decade point, a decade part of time, to where we can get some sort of balance. Mm. That's what actually needs to happen. Yeah. So like that sounds sm- reasonable. It is reasonable. It's already happened. It just happened in their benefit, not the small not business the benefit. Yeah. That way, whenever we give these small businesses these tax breaks, they're able to hire people. They're able to employ people. They're able to create jobs in their community. All the shit that we actually need to create a fruitful America, they could be able to do just from this one move. Like, look, dude, I could fix this shit. No. But, you know, everybody's smarter than me, and I'm just a dumb supplement seller. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? And YouTuber. <laughs> yeah, right. Anyway. I love it, man. But it's CTI. So let, let's give the people what they want. Let's give it to them. Um, I did want to bring up something, right? Because we, we've been talking about, like, you know, this is communism, right? And one of the things that we talk about quite often on this show is demoralization, mm-hmm. right? Like removing the, the breath of air from the American people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I wanted to bring this up because this is a new study that just, or a new poll that just came out. Um, and I and I want there, there's a couple of things here, but I want to dissect this a little bit with you quickly before we get into our headlines. So this is this is the title um, of the survey poll that came out by Gallup. Okay, listen, l- look at this. L- listen to this this title: Extreme pride in being American remains near record low. That would demoralize the shit out of me, right? It, it, just off face value, right? Like fuck, man. Nobody else feels extremely proud about being American, really. But then let's dive into it a little bit, all right? Uh, Let me tell you something, dude. I'll be the last motherfucker standing if I have to be. I don't give a fuck. Okay, this is a great fucking country. It's provided me an amazing opportunity in life that I've been able to capitalize on up until this point. I've created thousands of jobs. I've created amazing lives for people. I've helped them create amazing lives. I've done every single fucking thing that they told me about in my second grade class about... America being the greatest country and the American dream. I've done it all, bro, except become president, Mm. okay? I love America because I understand what it can do for someone who wasn't born into a situation of privilege if you're willing to fucking work. Now, did I have some privileges? Absolutely, bro. I had parents that gave a fuck about me. I had a dad who happened to run a business who taught me a lot of things about business when I grew up. There are some advantages I had. I'm not saying that I'm, I've fucking come from the dirt, right. okay? But what I'm saying is I'm a regular fucking human being and I've been able to accomplish a ton of shit in this amazing country. And I know how fucked up I am and how like regular of a person I am and how like lazy I am. Like I know the because I'm me, I know it, right? And I've still been able to do this, which gives me extreme belief that you can fucking do it too. And you guys all mistake my passion for your potential as anger towards you. And it's not. It's, hey, I know what the fuck you're capable of, bro. And you're not exercising that opportunity. And it's irritating to me. So when you guys can't understand like why I love this country so much and you have a hard time understanding it, 
Look at what I've built. I've built multiple companies. I've created tremendous things that like nobody ever thought could even be fucking created. Okay. I did that. We did that. These are just regular human beings. And if we're just regular human beings and you're regular human beings, what the fuck can you do? You could do amazing shit too. Okay. So this country is the only place in the world that's like that. And it's still like that. But we have these people who operate at the lowest potential standard available, for example, with affirmative action. We're all arguing the wrong thing. You guys are arguing about getting a job or getting into a college based upon your skin color. What kind of thinking is that? Is that high level thinking? Is that thinking I'm going to be an exceptional American? I'm going to dominate? I'm going to be better than everybody because I'm going to work hard? Or is that thinking I'm going to do the bare minimum and I hope that they take me because of this? Mm -hmm. Okay, so they, they have programmed us indirectly to think small and to think these weak thoughts when in reality, we should all be thinking, how the fuck do I become undeniable so that I'm so good that it doesn't matter if they hate me, they're still going to work with me mm -hmm. because I'm so good at what I do. That's the American mentality that has to be restored. It's personal excellence, bro. And they use these low IQ, low standard arguments of race and other Primal. identity politic issues to lower our thinking down to this level of like minimal acceptable standard. And that's not the standard that built this country. The standard that built this country was men and women of all races and all different backgrounds thinking massive ideas and then working together to make those ideas come to fruition. That's the American dream. And so when we think about like why they're saying or why they're stirring the way that they stir, they stir it because they understand that the automatic argument takes our thinking from high level to low level instantly the minute we start arguing about it. Yep. So this goes in with your demoralization. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's part of it. But that's the thing, like just off the bat, this extreme pride, right? And you'd read them like, fuck, man, like it's low. It's at a record low. But here's the thing. 67% of Americans are still very proud to be American. Right. Like like they, the manipulation that these people try to do, because most people don't read past the headlines. Um, it, it's fucking crazy. So, I mean, we got a couple of charts here and it shows the uh, U.S. adults pride in being American from. And, and notice when they put this out, too, because we're approaching July 4th. Right. Um, but they put this out. So this first graph we have, put, have up here it says U.S. adults pride in being American from 2001 to 2023. Okay. We're still at 67% of people, of Americans, are still very proud to be American. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, and yeah, just 39% are extremely proud. Okay. So, like, it's just very small little. Look, dude, America's <laughs> got its problems. Okay. This is no different than a business. This is no yeah. different than a relationship. This is no different than a friendship. I mean, sometimes shit gets fucked up. But you don't let it get all the way fucked up. Right. And that's where we're talking about you guys getting involved in, in the movement, in the mission, in the speech, mm -hmm. in the participation. Yeah. I mean, this is and just. By the way, I and my amazing team of fucking geniuses here have created a platform that will facilitate a movement just for this, that we're getting ready to unleash on the heads of all these fucking tyrants. Mm -hmm. Censor that. Yeah. But they break it down. This is by uh, uh, partisan lines. So you got 60% of Republicans are extremely proud. 29% of Democrats are extremely proud. But 33% of independents are extremely proud. But again, it's just, it's just the, it's the, it's the word vomit fucking lawyer language fight that they play all the time, dude. Um, now, here's one thing that I thought was really interesting. They have, oh, the age demographic. Well, it's scenario. interesting that 38% of Democrats say they're extremely proud. You got a Democrat president. You got all this Democrat policy for the last 10 years that y'all fucking argued for. You got it all. Everything you wanted, you got. What The only thing that you haven't got that y'all want is you want all your rich friends to give you their fucking money and they're not going to give it to you. Right. Like you're under, you don't understand. <laughs> no wealthy person that's created their fucking wealth is going to hand over their shit to you. Yeah, and I thought, that, and this one goes, this alludes right to our point too of, of everything that we've been talking about when it comes to this younger generation just having no real understanding of, you know, history. Yeah. Right? Um, because among the age demographics, also bipartisan, you know, 12% of Democrats aged 18 to 34 are extremely proud, right? 
but you go to 55 and older in Democrats and it's 38. So uh, there's a similar uh, disparagement in, in Republican side, right? Um, but here's one thing that I thought was crazy. So I dove into this and I noticed that in this Gallup article that just came out, they didn't have it divided up by race. Like I wanted to see, okay, where do white Americans stand? Where do black Americans stand, right? It's not in there. So I go back a little bit and I find this one from 2021. American pride ticks up from last year's record low, right? Um, and I noticed that it's, it's inside of that article. They have the race disparagements. And 63% of non-white Americans say that they are extremely proud or very proud to be Americans. Why didn't they include it in this one? Has it gone up? Probably. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just well, small shit like that I think I, I just find hilarious, man. Well, I do, I do think that, that black America, America particularly, obviously I can't speak for black America, but I can speak for <clears throat> our audience, which is made up of considerably large amounts of black people, um, that most black people have figured out that they've been lied to and manipulated. And the reason that their cities and their, their environment looks like shit is because of the same people that come in every two and four years and promise them to fix it. And they never do. And I think most black people like, dude, look on. You and I talk about this every day, dude. We look at rap or we look mm -hmm. at World Star. Or we look at, you know, when they try to trash like Trump or whatever, right? Bro, everybody in the comments is like, no, you guys are fucked up with this shit. Mm -hmm. We're tired of this shit. Fucking yeah. bring Trump in. Like, Daddy T, baby. Yeah. <laughs> so I just thought that was very it's interesting. It's not a pro-Trump thing, bro. We yeah. have to get this country back on track. Right. Like, dude, Trump is not the only fucking American option for a leader. Like, there's plenty of other ones out there that just aren't running because the environment has gotten so fucking bad that they're unwilling to run because they know what's going to happen to them, which is yeah. why you have to support the people that do these things. Yeah. Anyway. Right, yeah, I just thought that was an interesting thing, but it is cruising that internet. Yeah, 40 minutes in. <laughs> hey, it is what it is. All right. Uh, guys, remember, if you want to be see one of them long ones. Hey. Yeah. Better than a short one. Yeah, better than the short ones. <laughs> that just sounds so sexual. Because it was meant to be. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Guys, remember, if you want to see any of these pictures, articles, links, videos, go to andyfacella.com. You can find them there. Or you can drop down in the YouTube description below, uh, as long as it doesn't get pulled, <laughs> <laughs> and find them linked there. So let's get going on headline number one. There might be only one. one way to email your questions <laughs> in from now on. <laughs> headline number one. We got a little self-defense on the rise in America. Uh, headline reads, Carlicia Hood, woman accused of ordering 14-year-old son to shoot kill man at hot dog stand, will no longer face murder charges. Uh, so this is an interesting story. So a Chicago woman who was arrested for murder after allegedly ordering her 14-year-old son to shoot a man dead in a fast food eatery was freed Monday after prosecutors dropped the charges against her and the teen. Carlicia Hood, 35, and her son had both been charged with first-degree murder last week for the June 18th shooting death of Jeremy Brown, 32, at the hot dog joint Maxwell Street Express, CBS Chicago reported. Um, Hood and Brown uh, had gotten into an argument while waiting for food, and the mother allegedly texted her son, who was waiting in the car, to come help her. The young teen has been accused of gunning down the man with his mother's firearm at her order. However, new evidence... Uh, came to light over the weekend that made the Cook County State's Attorney's Office repeal the charges. Um, a previously unreleased video of Brown brutally pummeling Hood in the head inside the restaurant be began circulating on social media. Uh, quote, based upon our continued review and in light of emerging evidence, today the Cook County State's Attorney's Office has moved to dismiss the charges against Carlicia Hood and her 14-year-old son, the office said in a statement on Monday, uh, quote, based upon the facts, evidence, and the law, we were unable to meet our burden of proof in the prosecution of these cases. Now, here is the video. I uh, should warn our viewers and listeners, uh, viewer discretion is advised. Uh, but this is the incident. This is the new video that came up um, that got uh, Kalisha Hood and her son off of the charges. Get your food! Who? Get the cop! Oh, we talking about Get your food. Get your food. If you say one more thing, I'm going to knock you out. Oh, my God. I said one more thing, I'm going to knock you out. talking about what? Oh, he's Say one more thing, I'm going to knock you out. Oh, yeah. And the sun comes in banging. 
Is that what the gunshot was? Yeah, that's what that shot was. Okay. That was a 14 year old. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that guy deserved it. Definitely does that. Yeah. Deserved it. Yeah. So he took out a gun, the 14 year old, uh, which his mother was licensed to carry, according to the local station, and allegedly shot Brown in the back. The wounded man fled the restaurant, but was followed by the young teen and his mother, who reportedly told her son to keep shooting and kill the man. Uh, the teen fired more shots, striking Brown a total of two times, according to prosecutors. The man later died of his injuries. Hope it was worth it, you fuckface. Yeah, I mean, dude, I'm sorry, not sorry. I'm not sorry, dude. This shit is rampant. It's everywhere. And, dude, we have this whole fucking issue where all these people think they can run around and do whatever the fuck they want to people, and you run into the wrong person, and you end up dead. Well, it's funny you say that because it happened again. Uh, this headline reads, Married I Couple. I saw this video. This, this is awesome. fucking awesome. Yeah. A uh, married couple gets into shootout with armed rider- robbers at Texas gas station. So an armed Texas couple got into a shootout uh, with two would-be robbers at a gas station on Tuesday, wounding one of the suspects, according to police. Uh, the chaos erupted after a woman saw two men get out of separate cars with guns in the parking lot of a gas station in North Houston around 5.30 p.m. Uh, the woman, who was armed, called her husband, who was also packing heat, to alert him of the danger while he was inside the store, cop said. Uh, while the two suspects were trying to rob the place, one of the men threatened to kill the husband and hit him with a pistol, and a gunfight broke out. Here is the video. Houston robber fucks around and finds out. Okay, so this guy in pink attempted to rob a lady. She calls for her husband, who's inside a convenience store, and he comes out, and she's explaining everything to him. Look what this guy is doing. The robber still doesn't even want to settle down. Yeah. Look at him, look at him. Uh-oh. Wife pulls out a pistol. She might be pregnant, but she's packing. The people in the green charger are also people of interest in this entire uh, situation. Robbery gone bad. They're looking for them to talk to them. <clears throat> look, I bet he put that gun down now. All right, so that's the guy in the green charger. Look what he had on him at the scene. And that's the charger plate. Be on the lookout, folks. If someone fucking threatens you in public or fucking like, dude, you're in fear for your life. If you're in one of these states like Missouri, you're going to get fucking shot, dude. Like, that's it. The police aren't allowed to do their job. God bless them, bro. Most of the police are pissed off, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're frustrated as fuck because they're not allowed to do their job. A lot of these, uh, especially Democrat areas, are now holding these police officers personally responsible for the deaths of any potential outcome of of sticking up for these people justified so dude it's us to take care of us that's it and that's the the reality that we should all accept and until criminals understand that this is where carrying guns and shit corrects the problem like a lot of people who are anti-gun are not understanding that the reason you're not seeing more concealed carry uh crime stoppages is because the law has persecuted those people like they're doing to Daniel Penny, mm-hmm. all right, and made them fearful of actually standing up. But if the law would just allow citizens to handle shit on their own, this shit would end in a week. Yep. I got a famous saying, I'd rather be judged by 12 than carried by six. Bro, I can't stand it. I'm at, and I think most of America is at this point. They're at the limit of Obvious. accepting any of this criminal shit anymore. Mm-hmm. And like, dude, in your community, you, you men who are grown up, you should start working together to solve some of these problems in your community. You can take that for whatever the fuck you think it means. Yeah. That woman, like if you watch that video again. Oh, the pregnant woman? She yeah. was awesome. Yeah. Watch, her, watch what she does as he comes towards her. Like she, she's ready to go, bro. Like her hand goes right in her purse, dude. Robert fucks watch this. And finds out watch her, watch her what she does. Only watch her. Attempted to rob a lady. She already she knew what was happening. I know. Watch them. Who's inside a this is great. Store, and he this dude's out, waving his gun around like he's fucking Wyatt Earp. Look what this guy is doing. The robber. There you go. Hand and purse. There she is. And that's exactly down. what you got to do. Okay. You, you guys out here, when you think you're in a hard situation or a, a stressful situation or a dangerous situation like this, you need to be fucking ready and paying mm-hmm. attention because these people are not going to give you a chance to pull out your gun. It's not fair. They'll fucking shoot you. You'll be dead and they won't be. And then they'll probably be back on the street in a fucking hour. That's the fucked up part. Okay. About it. So like, dude, as far as any of us, good law-abiding citizens should be concerned, we should just kind of accept that we're on our own right now, at least for the time being. Mm -hmm. It's real shit, man. This is great, though, because what we're seeing is communities starting to stand up for themselves against this criminal element, which is exactly what's needed. Yeah, and it's sad because it should never have even been the case. These people have been emboldened for the last 
three or four years, bro. Really, honestly, since 2014. Yeah. Okay, since the Mike Brown shit happened. Thanks, Obama. And, yeah, and none of the police op. Now, it <laughs> l- l- listen, I want to paint this picture because yeah. it's important. The Mike Brown riots and then the Dallas police officer shooting yep. are what has created this situation. Those were the two, uh, the two situations where everybody in the country was watching, like, where the fuck are the cops and why aren't they doing anything? Mm-hmm. And then on the Dallas situation, Obama comes out and fucking trashed the cops. The six cops that were killed. Yeah. And that's what changed the whole dynamic. And so if you're a black person living in urban America and you wonder why your place is a crime zone, you can thank fucking Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. They've done this intentionally. That's where it started. Bro, imagine being someone, imagine being someone like the Obamas, right? And like, and no, no, for real, dude. Like, for real. Imagine the kind of person that you have to be to watch this happen and watch these communities be destroyed by their own criminal element, their own people, and, and, and actually think it's a good political thing for you. Like, this is great. This is happening because I'll be able to run in and promise well, them a solution. Me. Like, yeah. imagine... Yeah. What kind of person you have to be to think that way? You have to be soulless, dude. Like legitimately soulless. It's no, it's real shit. Yeah, it's real shit. Guys, let us know down in the comments what you think on this uh, first headline. Uh, let's get into headline number two. Let's talk about how these elites think of us. <laughs> we had a prime example of this uh, in our good state of New York. Let's head up there and check on New York City. Uh, New York City Mayor Eric Adams compares Jewish woman who escaped Holocaust to plantation owner. <laughs> now, how, how do we get these two things together? Oh, bro, it's fucking great. It's great. So, so New York City Mayor Eric Adams compared an 84-year-old woman who escaped the Holocaust to a plantation owner after she complained about rising rents at a town hall meeting in the Washington Heights neighborhood on Wednesday. Uh, Jenny Dubnow was born in Belgium after her parents fled Nazi Germany. She was well known in New York as an advocate for tenants' rights as the co-founder of the Riverside Edgecombe Neighborhood Association. Uh, now, here is the video of the exchange. Okay. Okay, first, if you're going to ask a question, don't point at me and don't do, be disrespectful to me. I'm the mayor of this city. Hold on. And treat me Stop this shit. Was- Motherfucker, fuck you. Okay? <laughs> you're right. You're the mayor of the city. You represent us. You're I'll point at you any way I fucking want. Yeah. So there's that. I wish I was in that fucking room. <laughs> Man. Oh, you're, you're not the fucking king of New York, bitch. It gets better. It gets better. It gets so much better. <clears throat> These people need an ass beating deserve to be treated i'm speaking to you as an adult don't stand in front like and everybody claps someone that's on the plantation that you own give me the respect i deserve and engage in the conversation up here in washington heights treat me with the same level of respect i treat you so don't be pointing at me don't be disrespectful to me speak with me as an adult because i'm a grown man i walked into this room as a grown man and i'm gonna walk out of this room as a grown man i answered your question go to the no, she did. He did not he, answer he didn't the question. Answer. <laughs> they are intentionally creating an unlivable situation in New York City, which, by the way, is one of my favorite cities on the planet. I haven't been there in three years because of the shit this motherfucker's pulled. And I love New York City. Mm-hmm. If I could be from anywhere else besides St. Louis, I'd probably fit in real well with New York people. OK, <laughs> uh, you're a piece of shit, sir. You're creating a Mr. scenario. Mayor. You're creating a. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got to say Mr. Mayor. Dude, look. <laughs> These people, they're not your rulers. They don't deserve your respect when they create scenarios that we live in as regular people here. The average American's paying $9,000 more a year. And New York, which is one of the highest cost of living cities on the planet. To begin with, yeah. It's not 9,000. It's that times a multiple. I don't know what it is. And this woman who 
is representing the voice of the citizens, is making a legitimate concern about her cost of living that you have a direct finger on, sir. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Okay? <laughs> and you are fucking the entire country or the entire city up because you won't address actual issues. You, ah, uh, bro. Mm. I'm so sick of these people. Yeah, man. These people don't deserve our respect. No. None of them. No. Well, the crazy. If you're gonna, if you want grown man respect, then be a leader. A do grown, grown man, man shit. Leader. Yeah. Do yeah. grown man shit. Take care of the people that elected you to come lead. Allegedly elected you, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. That's a whole. That's the next episode. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, man. But but so look. So so this uh, website. Uh, it's called Forward. Apparently, I'm talking to you because because this dude's black and I'm yelling at him. He, I'm talking to him like he's on the plantation. I'm automatically a plantation owner. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. Some of us point when we talk. I'm one of them, bitch. It's New York City. Don't they all talk with their hands and shit? Dude, I loved it. You I know what I'm she, saying? But, but I so felt like I was getting yelled at for like being out too late <laughs> on the street or something <laughs> by the neighbor lady. You know what I'm saying? But uh, so this this website called Forward, apparently, and I don't classify them as this, but they're classified as a left-weaning Jewish organization. Okay. Uh, they, they wrote a, an article about it. Um, and apparently they did an interview in this dumb, uh, dub now. So uh, the article reads, it says, uh, in a phone interview, dub now, a microbiologist on the faculty of Rutgers University said her mother was nine months pregnant when her parents fled Nazi Germany for Brussels, where she was born in 1938. Quote, they thought the Germans were going to invade Belgium, she said. Quote, they were in hiding. Quote, they fled again to France and eventually were lucky enough to come here to the U.S., sponsored by her mother's uncle. Dubnow herself lives in a co-op apartment, uh, but is a longtime volunteer with the Riverside Edgecombe Neighborhood Association. When she was asked, uh, asked to comment on the mayor's rhetoric toward her, uh, she said, quote, I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about what the mayor has done as an enemy of the tenants. He was deflecting. He was trying to get away from that. Smart woman. Exactly correct. Best part about it, uh, there has been no official response from the mayor's office, mm -hmm. Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. um, but Mr. Mayor's page did tweet the video, um, and it's full, excuse me, full uh, one hour and 38 minutes entirety. However, that little exchange was deleted outside of the video. Yeah. Well, they don't want, they don't want, no, listen, dude. Can't have it. No, you cannot criticize. If you want to know who makes the rules, Figure out who you can't criticize, okay? They don't want people to stand up in a meeting like this and undress these public officials because it shows them as being weak. Mm -hmm. And they, it, it lifts the veil that they are trying to pull over our eyes that these people are some sort of like elite force that we can't fuck with. And it shows how easily they can be fucked with when you just have a little bit of courage, okay? So they delete it. And that's not surprising. Just like when they tried to hide um, the situation with AOC in her own district where they were, they were, mm -hmm. uh, you know, harassing Same her. town hall meeting set up. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Bro, and because if they show this shit and it shows the public disapproval at a mass level, it's hard to believe that they magically got reelected. Interesting. Isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? I mean, if <laughs> everywhere they go, they get yelled at by these people and everybody sees it whenever the election results come out and they magically won again. That's kind of a hard pill to swallow. Just something to think about. Because every New Yorker I've talked to in AOC's district fucking hates AOC. When she goes and does her little speeches in her own district, she gets heckled mm -hmm. and harassed. Okay, so like. How much now think about how they paraded Biden around. Mm -hmm. How do they protect him from that? You see what I'm saying? The basement. Yeah, I know, dude. But like we as Americans have to fucking tie the illusion together, bro. They are protecting the image of these people so that they continue to push them into wherever they need them to be so that you guys don't call BS whenever you see it happen. Everybody knows that Joe Biden to get 81 million votes. I don't think he got 1 million votes. Bro, I mean. He got one million, but <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if he got two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but the point is, bro, we got to be smarter. We got to understand what they're doing. This is optics. This is intentional. They, the, 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 the tool they used 
the the tool they try to bring about to control everything also is exposing them, Mm. the internet, right? So, yeah, yeah, dude. And like, I love that this woman's like, yeah, I don't care what he said. This is my point. And he didn't answer it. And that's that. And like, dude, that's, you know, I don't care if she's left wing or right wing or fucking up wing or down wing, bro. I appreciate the fact that she's like, yeah, call me whatever you want. That's the attitude all Americans should have. Mm. Call me whatever you want, man, but I'm not going to let this shit slide. You don't call me names? All right, let's get back to, yeah, to what well, I said. Well, we yeah. all know, too, that you know the minute they start calling you names, they've lost the argument. Conversation's done. Because if you actually had the data points and the real argument that supported your position, you'd be able to make it without calling somebody names. Mm-hmm. Now, I Very call true. people names because I like it. But I'll call your names with evidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's real. Guys, let us know in the comments. Hashtag Mr. Mayor. What you guys think on this subject? Who's better mayor, Eric Adams or, or Bill de Blasio? Oh, fuck. <laughs> I mean, listen, Bill did have the french fries. Oh, dude. I, I, listen, <laughs> I'll be real, dude. I'm going to be real. I'm still picking Adams over de Blasio. Yeah? yeah? Fuck yeah. Dude, apparently I saw this other shit. You know why? Why? Because he's black? Well, no. Well, yeah, that's part of it. <laughs> no. No, yeah, it can't be two races. <laughs> right, right? Uh, no, dude. <laughs> I just couldn't stand that dude. Yeah, it was, like, it, I could his face. Like, I, I at, least, at least Eric Adams will get out and, like, argue a little bit. Mm-hmm. Like, I've seen that. Like, I've seen him argue with Hawk, right? Like, yeah. I've seen him argue. He argues to make points. De Blasio just treated these people like they were literal morons. Yeah. Ooh. French fries. So you telling me <laughs> that I can get some of these delicious fries? Mm. Is it too early for a burger? Mm. Oh. French fries, good. Mm. French fries. <laughs> All you got to do is get vaccinated. Change your whole DNA. Potentially have side effects for your whole life, but I'll give you some French fries. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. dude, I just couldn't stand his, well, his I don't arrogance. Know, I think he would have did the same shit if he was No, in. I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think he would have done it like that. He was. Do you want to be a slave owner? If not, get vaccinated. That's probably yeah, what he would have said. Maybe. I. I don't know. I. <laughs> I. There's a thing about their face, dude. Yeah. Like I just got to be real. Like when I look at Hillary Clinton, bro, I get. Oh. Angry. I get a fucking like you got. All right, we can all understand this example because all of us, when we look at Hillary Clinton, we get pissed off. Okay. <laughs> so think of how you feel when you look at Hillary Clinton's face. That's how I felt when I look at De, ba- De Blasio's face. Yeah. I don't get that when I look at Eric Adams. I'm just like, you're, you're, you're an asshole, dude. Yeah. You know? So I think that's the differentiating preference factor here. Hmm. Bro, I'm sure that could be some form of like, uh, like w- w- a purgatory. Like, that's probably going to be a purgatory, bro. For me, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to stare at a picture of Hillary Clinton for eternity. <laughs> 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 Guys, headline number three. And her little emperor outfit. <laughs> <laughs> Next to Klaus. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Guys, headline number but three. She had that same quality that fucking de Blasio has, where she speaks from such a place of arrogance yeah. that she assumes that everybody else is stupid. And it plays into the ultra-educated crowd because the ultra-educated crowd doesn't understand that there's a difference between education and intelligence. intelligence yeah. Having a high education just means that you were able to follow directions to a point of high level, okay? Mm -hmm. Being intelligent means you can critically think and connect dots on your own with your own critical thinking ability, and the two are not the same skill. And highly educated people generally think that they're also highly intelligent because the state awarded them a cookie called a diploma (laughs) that makes them feel like they're very smart and they're smarter than everybody else. And so when they hear Hillary talk and do her theatrics and shit, they're like, oh yeah, all these deplorables, they're all, uh, you know, they're they are morons and, you know, they, they try to make everybody else seem stupid. And like, dude, the funny thing is, is like, I'm not a highly educated person, but I was gifted with a certain level of intelligence that's, I don't know, beyond average. And uh, you motherfuckers that went to Cornell and got your degrees and shit, you work for me. Right. So, and you work for people like me. Like CEOs get hired in for their ability to follow exact directions because they went to Harvard or they went to Yale or they went to Brown and they passed all their hard tests. They're there to, they're there to maintain. They're not there to found things and create things and imagine things. And these are two different skill sets. So all of these high, highly educated people resonate with the, the, the far left message because they make it feel 
as if you're highly intelligent when in reality, intelligence is a completely different skill set. Yep. So you're appealing to someone's ego for passing a test over and over and over again and making them feel like they're smarter than everybody else. No, the smartest motherfucker said, hey, these tests are stupid. I'm going to build my own shit. <laughs> no shit. No shit. <laughs> so, you know, this is why you get this like arrogance from these people. Yeah. And, and at, or, uh, de Blasio did the same thing as Hillary. That's mm -hmm. the thing that like makes my skin crawl. The worst. It's that, <laughs> it's that, uh, it's that perspective that unless you are a blue blood Ivy League PhD graduate, you're a dumbass, mm. right? That's just not the truth. You're able to follow directions. I wasn't able to follow directions because I was too busy thinking about other shit. I was thinking about creating things and doing things. Creating directions. Yeah. And yeah. like, dude, it's just not the same thing. It's real shit. This is yeah. why when I go to the doctor's office, I park in their parking spots. <laughs> you do. I do do that. <laughs> Absolutely. What the fuck are they going to say? Oh, man. What are they going to say? Fuck, that doctor must be really good. <laughs> what are they going to say? They all got their little Porsches and right. their little three series BMWs and their five series, maybe if they're killing it. And they all walk around <laughs> thinking they're badass motherfuckers. And I pull in my La Ferrari and I park it in their fucking spot. What are they going to say? Nothing. Yeah. I do it intentionally too. Yeah, no. I don't care if you think I'm an asshole. <laughs> Somebody's got to remind them, bro. You ain't hey, the king of the world. That's real shit, man. The La Ferrari ain't even the best car in my fucking stable. Y'all just think it is. Yeah. I might find that out on YouTube soon. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> Plans might have been canceled. <laughs> Guys, our third and final headline, headline number three. Headline number three reads, Supreme Court outlaws affirmative action in college admissions and landmark decision. So affirmative action's gone. We covered this a little bit uh, on yesterday's show, but there has been some new developments. Mm. Um, we did cover this on yesterday's show, but we nobody did. heard it. Oh, it's true. Yeah, so we got to... Okay, I'll give you a yeah. quick, quick rundown. So the Supreme Court uh, struck down affirmative action programs at Harvard University and the University of North Carolina Thursday, ruling that both institutions were in violation of the 14th Amendment. Quote, eliminating racial discrimination means eliminating all of it, Chief Justice John Roberts wrote in the majority opinion. Quote, and the Equal Protection Clause we have accordingly held applies without regard to any difference of race, of color, or of nationality. It is universal in its application. Uh, the Chief Justice concluded his opinion by saying that while colleges can consider an applicant's, quote, discussion of how race affected his or her life, be it through discrimination, inspiration, or otherwise, universities may not simply establish through application essays or other means the regime we hold unlawful today. So it's a big win, right? <clears throat> and, uh, but there, there's been some more. So I want to bring up the other developments and we'll kind of, okay, go all on top of it. Right, I try not to interrupt. <laughs> I got good. a lot to say. It's good, man. Yeah. I um, took, took pre-workout. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, I took, I took, a, <laughs> that's what it is, bro. Sorry guys. <laughs> I got, high, I got a little too high on my own supply. Hey, I get it. Right? I took a megawatt up there in the office thinking, man, I'm fucking tired. And bro, and then I came down here and drank half the energy drink. Yeah. So you might have to take me to the ER later. You might have to park in the parking spot. I'm just saying. <laughs> and you got the lot today. Yeah, that's so right. And I did drive it today. <laughs> Perfect timing. Yeah. So so we got the affirmative action. So that was a that was the first big win. But the Supreme Court has been on a roll. They also, uh, this headline reads, Supreme Court rules against Biden's student loan debt handout. They just shut that down, saying that uh, the Supreme Court ruled Friday that the Biden administration cannot go forward with its student loan debt handout program. In a 6-3 decision, the court held that federal laws does not allow the Secretary of Education to cancel more than $430 billion in student debt. Quote, the Secretary's plan canceled roughly $430 billion of federal student loan balances completely erasing the debts of 20 million borrowers and lowering the median amount owed by the other 23 million from 29,400 to 13,600. Uh, Chief Justice John Roberts wrote for the majority, uh, quote, uh, six states sued arguing that the HEROES Act does not authorize the loan cancellation plan. We agree. Um, so you have that, right? And then, and then another, there, there's brother three for three. Supreme Court limits LGBT. <laughs> Hold on, for this is CNN. All right, let's brace yourselves. Supreme Court. I gotta read it. How they fucking want me to read it, right? 
Supreme Court limits LGBTQ <laughs> protections with ruling in favor of oh a Christian God, web designer. Do it again. I won't lie. <laughs> <laughs> Supreme yeah, Court. Too. Yeah, you try. Uh, <laughs> Oh, I can't do it. Our rights are limited. <laughs> Supreme, can you believe the Supreme Court just limited our LGBTQ LMNOP protections, ruling in the favor of mega <laughs> Christian web designer? <laughs> like that's what I imagine. <laughs> Total meltdown, <laughs> bro. That could. Like, oh my goodness! All right, <laughs> so, I missed. It. I'm not fucked it up. They would have said ultra mega. Yeah, right. Ultra mega. Yeah. Yeah, so so senior writes the Supreme Court ruled in favor of a Christian web designer in Colorado who refuses to create websites to celebrate same sex weddings out of religious objections. The six three decision was penned by Justice Neil Gorsuch and joined by Chief Justice John Roberts and Justices Samuel Alito, uh, Justice Barrett, Kavanaugh, and Justice Thomas. Uh, Justice Sotomayor penned a dissent joined by her liberal colleagues, Ju Justices Kagan and uh, Justice Jackson. Uh, so Lori Smith, who runs a company called 303 Creative, sought to expand her business into the area of weddings and wrote a Web page explaining why she won't create websites for same sex couples. But under a Colorado public accommodations law, she said she cannot post the statement because the state considers it illegal. Uh, the ruling, rooted in free speech grounds, will pierce state public accommodation laws for those businesses who sell so-called expressive goods. It is the latest victory for religious conservatives at the high court and will alarm critics who fear the current court is setting its sights on overturning the 2015 marriage case. That's not what's happening. That's not what's happening. So let's go through each one well, of these topics. Yeah. OK, well, let's just start with this one okay. since we're on it right now. You know, that is not what's happening. And, and to be completely honest, on a personal level. I don't really agree with this woman's position about not making a cake for a gay couple. Like that's like if I well, this was a, a website, that was a difference. Yeah. Okay. Hold yeah. on. Yeah. If I were owning a cake bakery, I would have no problem doing this. Mm -hmm. Like I don't have an issue with that. Um, the reason that this is an issue and, and for you guys who are being told this is an attack on the gay community, it's not, is that this country was founded upon freedom of religion. OK, and you are allowed to exercise your religion without being oppressed by certain rule sets of the government of the United States. That's the fundamental reality. So mm -hmm. so what they're saying here is that and this is what I think they're saying. Is that this woman, because that's her religious belief that that's wrong, mm -hmm. is allowed to run her business however she chooses, which is under the umbrella of freedom. Yeah. Now, and it doesn't infringe on the gay rights because. The only way that would infringe on the gay rights is if she was the only web designer in the fucking world. Dude, because look, there's other web designers that they're happily and have the okay, freedom to go to. Maybe there's web designers yeah. that won't, that, that, oh, this is not cakes? No, that was a, that was a different right. situation. Well, I got confused. All but in Colorado. The point though. is, um, the web design, all right, maybe there's web designers that only make for gay people. Mm -hmm. How do we know that doesn't exist? Exactly. And this is sort of like what I was talking about earlier about, them wanting to encroach and push their positions onto people and force. That's not a winning strategy. That's never going to work. You guys are never going to be able to force people to do these things that are against their religious beliefs. It's not going to happen. Nope. Okay. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I disagree with that sort of thinking. Like, I don't have a problem with people wanting to be with whoever they want to be with. Yeah. Um, but that's the thing. You have those, as long you have as you leave freedom. the kids alone. Right. I have no problem. Right. We go back to where we were 2015, where everybody was that was gay was just doing their thing like a normal citizen. You were leaving the kids alone. Bro, what the fuck is wrong with that? This is America, bro. Mm -hmm. No, like that's my position. Like a lot of you guys think I'm ultra conservative. I'm not. I'm actually very common sense. I personally believe that you should probably accept gay people and do their business and, and treat them like regular people. That's, that's what I think. However, we also have a layer of thinking above that, which is this country was founded upon freedom of certain types of concepts, one of them being freedom of religion. And if this actually goes against someone's freedom of religion, then we can't impose upon them to do certain things. It would be no different than if, if they were asked to make a satanic website mm -hmm. and they said, no, we're not making that because we don't believe in that. Right. It's the same thing. It's not about 
gay people in particular, the media is trying to make it about gay because of what's going on with the Supreme Court. And, and my personal opinion on all of this shit is they're trying to rile up every single hot point issue going into the election. I think so too. And also distract from the other issues that we need to be really focused yeah. on. But nonetheless, I mean, we still cover it. But so that, there's that, that's my opinion on that. <clears throat> I mean, what do you yeah. think? No, I, I'm with you. I think, here, here's the thing, freedom, I, freedom's for everybody, right? I, and, and I think, you know, here's, here, here's how the left needs to understand it. And I guess, uh, here's, here's a situation, right? We'll, paint, we'll flip the scenarios, right? Let's say, uh, we can talk about, we'll fucking do cakes. Let, let's say you are a gay baker. Um, and let's say, you know, you have this bakery, you like to bake fucking nice cakes. And I come in and I ask for a cake um, that says uh, anti-LGBT. I want L- anti-LGBT written on the fucking cake. You have the right to say, no, I'm not making that cake for you. Correct. Right? You have the freedom to say that. And just like I have the freedom to not shop at this store because you won't make my cake, I will just go to another fucking store. The freedoms are in place for both sides. This right. is a win-win for everybody. Right. You know, and so you, while we still have the fucking freedom to do these things. But it also exposes a fundamental flaw in the thinking of the progressive left ideology. Exactly. They which, go straight to victimhood, Which is bro. intentional. Yeah. Because these people, they may not know they're part of the communist movement yet, but they are, okay? And part of that is enforcing a, a standard on everybody that is not with the standard of the general uh, majority of the population, mm-hmm. okay? So- <clears throat> You know, we, we, we have to understand that in order for LGBTQ people to exist in this country, they have to be protected by freedom. And this actually creates a situation of more freedom for them, not less, like they're being mm-hmm. spun up in the media. Exactly. Yeah, it could be because there's the thing. Imagine if the Supreme Court ruled that, okay, you know, you have to. So now you, as a fundamentalist, you know, you know, pro LGBT community, and I come to you say, make my anti LGBT cake. Now you have to, yeah, right. You'd be pissed at that, yeah. You know, so right. it, it goes both ways. That's a good point. It's bisexual. <laughs> you get it. <laughs> All right, second issue. Let's talk about. Let's talk about the student loans, Andy. <laughs> talk about the student loans that got struck down. Where you stand on that? I, you know, I'll, real talk. It's not. It's probably not what you think. Probably not what you think. I've been thinking a lot about this. Mm-hmm. If I were president, I would wipe everybody's fucking debt. Hmm. Everybody's debt. We've been enslaved by a, a predatory financial institution and tax code system that has made it impossible for the ideas that America is fundamentally founded upon to actually be realized. Hmm. Okay. The idea that we can create from the dirt these amazing things. And they've encrupt the financial system has been purposefully indebted and made. So like, who knows how much money okay, yeah. off of the regular people that have just had to use and leverage debt to get ahead at, in any way, shape or form. Most Americans at this point in time have more than $15,000 of credit card debt. That's predatory. You can't live like that. It's not a long term solution. And if we look at the real enemies, the real enemies are the financial institutions that continue to uh, intentionally miseducate the youth, right? Like when we're in high school, bro, I went to a top 25 academic high school when I was in high school, okay? I didn't go to a dumb fuck high school. We did not learn how to balance a personal checkbook. Mm. We did not learn how to, uh, how simple interest works or these running a household with basic financial literacy. We were not taught that. And it's never been a part of the American curriculum because they want you to go out and fuck up because once you fuck up, now you have to go to work and do what they say, okay? And this is how they get you. And so if we want true freedom, there should be a break in the system that is so harsh, like, like a great reset, but only for us, okay? Where we say, hey, no, fuck you. You guys have made trillions of dollars over the course of the last hundred years. You fucking impoverished so a massive percentage of this free country that's supposed to be about prosperity. We're wiping everybody's motherfucking debt. We're gonna start to fuck over. And when we start over, you morons go out and get yourself all fucked up again, then that's your, your fault. But we, we as citizens deserve some relief from the financial oppression that we have. And so I actually think, uh, you know, I know when we covered this many months ago or even a year ago, whenever Biden was saying that or two years ago, I was really pissed off about it because I'm like, dude, 
we're we're responsible for our adult decisions, which I tr- I do believe. Okay, but when the adult decisions that we make are made with a faulty system that's designed for us to be enslaved for our whole entire lives, which is what has come to my understanding. Um, I think it's time that we say, hey, fuck you guys. Yeah, I think most people's issue on this was the fact that, you know, the people who owe student debt that only represents 13% roughly of the population. Yeah. So you had a situation where 87% are having to pay for this mm-hmm. fuck up, right? Mm-hmm. I think in your situation and hearing, hearing how you're saying it, <clears throat> It, it, I mean, it sounds amazing. The thing is, it actually has been done in history before. Uh, so the entire financial system of Egypt has w- w- uh, collapsed, right? So the richest man in Africa, uh, Mansa Musa, he went through Egypt, right? And, you know, because, you know, his whole argument is, you know, you can't have wealth without debt. And he went through, you know, Egypt and he gave every single citizen of Egypt he saw a shit ton of gold. Well, their entire financial system fucking collapsed. Right. Because there was no more debt. There's no more wealth. Right. And like it completely destroyed. So it'd be interesting to see how that gets rolled out. That's not how it would work now. How it would work now is it would create a break where the the there's so many little financial institutions that exist that are completely uh, designed around interest and making money at Mm -hmm. the expense of citizens that if you created a break in the system. Most of those systems would collapse and fail. The bigger ones would exist, but it would also allow an opportunity for new ones to emerge that mm. weren't beholden to all these other elite people. Right. Okay. And, <clears throat> and so if we were to wipe debt, you know, the country is in 30 plus trillion dollars worth of debt. If we were to wipe personal debt, we would create an economic switch that would turn the economy on instantly and also allow our generation, the, the, not just my generation, but I'm talking about our generation, everybody that's living in America right fucking now, from zero to 100 years old that's alive. Because we, we are in a generation as well. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, because yeah. in 80 years, there will be an entire new generation of America's top to bottom. And it would allow us to actually create some sustainable uh, wealth and gain some of it back from these companies like BlackRock or these companies, like BlackRock owns fucking how many trillions of dollars of assets? They're the Shit biggest. Ton. Yeah, dude. Like, All of and, it. <laughs> yeah, and they're controlling the government now, and they're controlling the media now, and they're controlling the pharma companies now, and they're controlling everybody now because they have so much shit. Well, eventually, we have to take some of that shit back from them, okay, and redistribute it through. So, like, in my opinion, like, and I know that sounds very. I'm going to say seven. All right. I know that sounds very socialist. Well, antifa Okay. But the, <laughs> the problem with socialism is that they target the wrong fucking class of people. Yeah. They target the mid-level. They yeah. target the mid-level entrepreneur who's made a few million bucks. And they say that your neighbor up there that drives the BMW, he's the fucking enemy. No, he's not the enemy. It's these motherfuckers who are telling you he's the enemy that are actually the enemy. And their ideas that they push down on us are actually supposed to be used on them. Mm. And that's what I personally think. So like, yeah. you know. Um, I, I personally think that personal financial debt should be wiped. I think tax should be 10% all in. I think the size of the government should be reduced by 80%. Um, and I think if we did that, we'd have the greatest country in the world financially and it would happen fucking very quick. I love that. Andy, last thing, let's get on this, uh, friend of affirmative action. Yeah. Well, I mean, what do you think on that, dude? Well, I got a couple of things. I think First of all, I'm happy. I think it's far overdue. I think affirmative action should have been flipped. Um, it's been in place for 60 years. And I think if most, if anybody took the time to just look, right, like truly look at the data and look at the negative impacts that affirmative action has had, they will see that there is, there is a direct negative correlation, increase of affirmative action, decrease in education standards. Right. And, and pre- predominantly the black communities. Right. Because those are the people who are benefiting, quote unquote, from a fair you're, action. You're saying that. The black communities have become less educated mm-hmm. because of affirmative because action. of affirmative action. And, yeah. and, and that's not just you know, that's not just DJ saying that. Um, according to the uh, let me get the actual name real quick. Sorry. Uh, that's according to the American Council on Education. Okay, here's their chart, right? Break it down. 
look at the stack difference between black or African American when it comes to English level, math, reading, science, compared to the white students. Okay. Bro, this is insane. All four subjects, the average for white students is 33%. All four subjects for black students is 6%. So you tell me how that's good that's unacceptable, dude. It's unacceptable. But that's the thing. But it's like, but like that's what this system. How, how do we get to this? We get because these are not the same numbers that it was 60 years ago, right? Like people forget, like that's when we had a boom in our in, in black education. We had black HBCUs being developed, right? Like we were building schools. Those levels have declined. And they're declining because now there's no more, there's no sense of drive uh, or, or or even the the the, the drive to inspire to become there's more. no motivation. No, there's, there's no standard to meet. I can just get in because I'm black. I, what do I have to read this book for? What do yeah. I have to one plus and one? And then you got parents telling their kids that. Hey, don't worry about it. You don't got to do that shit. You're going to get in anyway because of this. Exactly. I want to throw this other chart up. Um, and then we go to Harvard's preferences for underrepresented minorities. Okay. And this chart, this is from Harvard themselves. And it shows that black students who would be classified in the fifth percentile of education standards get accepted more than white students who are in the highest percentile of academic standards, right? So you tell me, if, if, is, is that fair, right? Like, would, would this be acceptable if this was, you know, flipped? How could that be, cons how could that, here's my question. How could that not be considered racism? Okay, when you have a race, okay, racism applies, let, let's just clear this up. This shit of black people uh, can't be racist is bullshit. OK, yeah, everybody <laughs> um, knows it. everybody can be racist. It's about judging people on their race. All right. And America is not founded upon judging people on their race. That's not what the idea. Now, you, the founding fathers had slaves. Yeah, they were fucked up. But there was a whole bunch of white people that died actually correcting that issue. Mm -hmm. We never talk about those people. Right. Um, and that's been an issue that's been ongoing that, you know, Good hearted Americans, Americans that believe in the idealism of America, what the concept should actually represent. We've all fought to create an equal society. It's taken a long time. There's been a lot of fucking death to get to this point. So this argument that you cannot be that this isn't racism because it's against white people. That's that's basically saying that white people are subhuman. They're not part of the population. OK, so like if I'm a white dude and I work my ass off and I try to get into Harvard and. I'm in the top 95% of, of, the, of the talent pool mm -hmm. and a black person gets in because they're black at, at, when they're in the bottom 5% of the talent pool. How is that not racism? Because I'm being denied my opportunity and I did everything I'm supposed to do. Now, now everybody listening to this, I don't care how you feel about me. You know that's wrong. That's fucking wrong. And, and America shouldn't be built upon this kind of dynamic at all in any way, shape, or form. If you look at the sports teams, the sports teams aren't that way. We don't have, we don't have white people uh, suing the NBA to be in the NBA. Everybody knows that, like, hey, you little white dudes probably can't play in the NBA because you're not good enough. Right. Um, <clears throat> we don't have that in any other sports. The best people play. It's a meritocracy. That's how you produce the best result in your cause, in your team, in your country. That's how it's produced. And so to go along with your argument about when you remove the standard that needs to be met, there is no motivation to meet a standard. And over the course of generations, that creates a situation where we have massive disparities, which mm -hmm. is clearly identified by, you know, the statistical data. Well, then you add on to the top of the, the fact of it is too, like for Harvard, for example, you know, if, if your income, so you combine that low educational standards, you combine that with poverty, um, and where if your household makes less than $85,000 a year, there is no charge for tuition. Like there's zero. You pay zero. Hmm. Right. So like, look at the incentivization that it like, like the whole fucking thing is fucking disgusting. man. I know. But dude, like, let's let's break this down a little bit further. In California and San Francisco area, they actually have situation now where they're removing certain dynamics like mathematics mm -hmm. from the equation. It's racist. Because the black students can't test out at the high, at a proper level. So they're just saying, fuck it. We won't judge them by this anymore. Well, then you're severely handicapping them to do basic shit. Like, look, dude, you'll never find someone who's more of a critic of the math 
curriculum than me. All right. <laughs> um, you need basic algebra after that, unless you're going to be an engineer, it's bullshit. Yeah. Pythagorean theorem. It's fucking bullshit. Out the window. Okay. And I, I get it. Like I had to be tutored through school. Um, you know, I, I was very, math was a hard thing for me. Uh, I understand basic algebra and how to do a spreadsheet mm-hmm. and how to make money. That's the math I understand. Outside of that, the shit was fucking wasting my fucking time. Okay. <laughs> and so I, I, I'm a critic of the mathematics curriculum, unless you're going to be someone who is going to use this shit on a regular basis. I think it's a big waste of time for most people. Um, with that being said, when you remove an entire subject from the curriculum because a certain segment of the population cannot test and pass the tests, you're creating a situation where the basic skills that they would need with the basic math skills uh, that they would learn and need throughout their life do not get taught or or received. Mm -hmm. And what does that create? That creates a more dependent society. That creates a society that is less equipped to go out and win And this is not happening to just the black students. This is happening to all students because of affirmative action. Because of this, yeah. And so we have a dumbing down of America. I talked about this a little bit on my story today in regards to the censorship issue. The censorship issue does the same thing to content on the internet. Mm -hmm. This is why you see bullshit content getting 50 million views and nobody can talk about anything that matters. Otherwise, they're banished from the internet, right? Um, and so they consume views of people eating their boogers and, you know, doing goofy ass shit. And that becomes their whole data point. So when we talk about personal excellence being the ultimate rebellion and we talk about consuming, becoming a mega consumer of their information, they're feeding you the information that's going to make you stupid anyway. It's going to rot your fucking brain like your grandma used to say. All right. Yeah. And they're doing this intentionally because the dumber America is, the easier it is to control. And On top of all this, the point you point out at the point I just made, it's it's hard for me to understand the thought process of someone like this woman who made the famous tweet yesterday. Oh, Um, Jesus. um, Do we have that tweet? I can pull it up for you. Yeah. So there was a woman who made this tweet yesterday. Yeah, so there's this woman here. Her name's Erica Marsh. She's on Twitter. And I'm not doing this to get her attacked or anything. I'm just doing this to point out oh, something. Oh, she did herself. So yeah, yeah, listen, she's getting attacked already. This is not what I'm... Th- I'm not doing this to cancel this person. Yeah. I'm doing this to make a point. Because it does confuse me and it does bother me. Like, fundamentally, as a human being. Her bio says, proud Democrat, former field organi- organizer to elect President Biden. Uh, volunteer. So she fucking parked cars is what she did. That's what right? she did, yeah. Uh, Volunteer for the Obama Foundation. She, her, not that that matters right now, but it kind of does. Um, so she has this profile. Ukraine back pick, right? You get it. So it's a field of like flowers. Okay. It's the blue sky. Right. You see the Ukraine flag there. Okay. Little, little, little symbolism. Yeah. So she's clearly <laughs> way over there on the left. All right. right. And this woman tweeted, today's Supreme Court decision is a direct attack on black people. No black person will be able to succeed in a merit-based system, which is exactly why affirmative action-based programs were needed. Today's decision is a travesty. Okay, so here's what bothers me. This is is what bothers me. How can you all say I'm racist, okay, for some of the shit I've said, where I call bullshit on George Floyd, and y'all, you know, you, you guys call white people racist like, Like, it's no big deal, right? And you try to ruin their lives and all this Mm -hmm. shit. And we've been dealing with this for a long time, okay? How can you say that these people are racist when all these people that you're calling racist are saying, hey, man, we're all created equal. Let's work together. Let's build each other up. Let's let's take care of these black communities. Let's let's actually solve some of these problems. Let's, Let's create the ideal America that is supposed to exist that has never actually existed. Let's do that together as Americans. How can you call those people racist, but you can't call someone racist who literally believes that black people are incapable of succeeding in a merit-based system by their own words? And this is the fundamental belief behind the idea that black people can't get a driver's license Mm -hmm. and voter ID is racist and they don't know how to use a computer. And like these people are so inherently racist 
that they aren't even aware of their own racist beliefs. If you want to know what white supremacy actually is, this is someone who believes because she is white, she is smarter than the average black person. Okay? And that is racism. So when we talk about what racism is on this show, and DJ, you and I have talked about this for a long time. What do we say? We say the real racism in America is what? It's the politicians that come in every two and four years who always have a D next to their name, who promise to take care of the black communities, who then instead push these prosecutors that don't enforce the, uh, the, the, the law on the criminals, who release the criminals, the violent criminals out into the street to create more death and destruction, who steal the funds that are supposed to go towards education, who actually create this hardship intentionally so they can come in every year and blame it on the fucking Republicans, dude. Yep. All right? And this has been happening since the fucking 1960s. Okay? And, and, and dude, so how, how can we, as American citizens, sit here and not call this out for what it is? And how do we not identify that this perception, like think of all the things Joe Biden has said, bro. I, I don't want my school to turn into a racial jungle. Yeah, right. Oh, I got a little old school Biden for How about you. this? <laughs> how about, how about, um, how about if you don't vote for me, you ain't black. Yeah. Okay. Like, so black people aren't capable of having their own conclusions and thinking their own thoughts because fundamentally these people believe that they are actually more intelligent than the entire black community. That is the racism that you and I have been trying to communicate for years. Mm -hmm. This is what we're talking about. And so like, to me, if I were a black person, I don't get offended by shit, but I can tell you this. If you came into me and said, hey, you're fucking less capable than everybody else because you're black, I'd be like, motherfucker, just watch this shit. And I would create something so fucking amazing that and shove it down your fucking throat until the day you die. That's what I would do, because that's how I'm wired. And it's unfortunate because, dude, little kids, when they're told this kind of shit, they end up believing it when they're big. You want to talk about slavery? Slavery is still fucking happening. It's happening from the far left indoctrination of our black American children in the school system, telling them that they can never fucking succeed because of these white people over here. And that's fucking bullshit and it's wrong. And that's the real racism. And dude, it might not be chains and bars and like, Slavery like we think of it, but it's mental slavery because it creates a box of thinking that these kids can never escape from. Yep. And then you put them into the financial slavery. <clears throat> Bro, we're all slaves. Yeah, man. I mean, all of us. Like, dude, even me. Dude, I love how she tries to clarify. So she tweeted another tweet trying to clarify. She says, allow me to clarify this tweet, which is oh. being manipulated for propaganda and misinformation. By who? By Ultra MAGA. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have that ultra in there. I want to emphasize that my statement in no way suggests that black individuals are less intelligent than people of other races. No, Erica, that's actually exactly what the fuck it meant. And that's exactly what you meant. Like, like she, dude, she did mean it, and she's unaware of her own bias towards black people. And here's the thing: like, even when on the merit based system, right? Like, I mean, I, I feel like there, there could be an argument made that there was never a merit based system that was truly allowed. Right? Coming out of the civil rights movement, they felt like this was the fix. Because the merit-based system was not allowed to be. No, no, no. You're exactly right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Black people were never allowed to even be plugged into the merit-based system. So you're because saying. Because the exact same time that they did this, this, uh, the civil rights movement is when they started the welfare program. Exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, it's like, okay, Erica. No, dude. It's, it's, it's more than okay, Erica. Like, you people who are on the left who think this way and call every other motherfucker racist. You know, I wear an American flag. Oh, you're fucking colonizer racist. No, you're a fucking racist. Because unlike you, when I see someone else, I don't think, oh, that person is Indian, or that person is Bosnian, or that person is black, or that person is fucking whatever. I, like, I don't think those things. I just think, okay, like, there's fucking Steve. You know what I'm saying? Like, we don't think that way. And, and, um, it, and the problem is, is that, and, and dude, this is why it's pushed so hard. It's actually creating real racism. That's the thing no one's talking about. Or, the, or not only is it creating the real racism, not only on, not, not only that, but the real racism 
gets fucking hidden. And nobody can talk about it. It's like the boy who cried wolf. So nobody's going to believe when the real shit is actually going oh, on. Oh, yeah. Well, when everything's racist, no, nothing's racist. Dude, <clears throat> I want to point to something else out on this affirmative action thing. So you have the uh, education secretary, Cardona, uh, says uh, SCOTUS, SCOTUS racial preference ruling undercuts legacy admissions. We'll have to look at those in wake of ruling. So their counter to this is that, well, what about the legacy rulings, right? Uh, which is he saying that... Uh, uh, Cardano stated, uh, well, in many cases, they expand privilege, not opportunity. So while for those who are listening and not sure what legacy means, it's if your family went to that college, you have access to that college. That still exists. And we need to recognize that if we're going to look at the tools that are being used for college admissions. That's interesting. Did we did we check with Obama and, and his daughters? They both got to Harvard. That's where Obama went. Isn't that a legacy admission? Pierce to be do we, so. Do we like take those diplomas back? Right. Like, I mean, the whole thing is just fucking absurd. And and I think <laughs> like you stated in the beginning, too, it's like, you know, I think all of these things, I think these are more just distractions to get us off of the call for accountability. And, and I think that's what kind of we if we could. Oh, you mean for the that. crimes against humanity they just yeah. committed for the last two and a half years? Yeah. It's like, look, dude, I, I do feel like all of these rulings are coming down in a row intentionally to create uh, points of contention amongst American citizens. And so we have to be smart enough to understand that their intent with these rulings is to create riots and protests and disorder on the streets. And we as citizens have to be smart enough that these things that they're doing are intentional. This isn't just about making a ruling. There's timing to these rulings. And there's, a, there, dude, it's all intentional. What, what, what time of year is it? Oh, it's fucking George Floyd time. Just mm -hmm. about. We're a few days away, right? Like, yeah. like, dude, like, uh, or we're like right in the middle of it, I guess. Now, yeah. um, they, they took away your college access and your student loans. Yeah, look, dude, they're trying. <laughs> yes, they're trying to create an uprising amongst these far left little soldiers that they have, mm -hmm. and then create a situation where you know it pulls in. Because, like, dude, look how many like when George Floyd happened. Look how many regular like like not conservative, but even like just moderate, uh, normal Americans got pulled into it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what they're trying to do, in my opinion, with all of this is, is to create enough disturbance that people get pulled back in and they create more chaos. Yep. And because I think they think that that's the, I think they know that that's the only way that they can get, get in. You know, uh, fundamentally though, bro, the point of America is all men are created equal. Everybody's uh, entitled to the same opportunities, which, you know, within reason, right? Like some people are going to have an easier time than other people. There's, that's a reality. You're not going to be able to legislate true equal, uh, of, of outcome. It's not going to happen. And, um, you know, but what, what needs to happen is all of America needs to come together black. And by the way, if black and white America came together, these people are fucking finished. Mm -hmm. They're fucking finished. That's why they push the race shit so hard. But if everybody came together, dude, and we all worked together and we all said, hey, man, uh, we're not falling for any more of your shit. In fact, we're not doing anything. We're not fucking we're not paying your taxes. We're not we're not listening to your laws. We're going to do our own thing. We would take all the power from them and they would be totally fucked. And we could take the whole thing over just because their shit would collapse. Yep. And that that might be the solution here. I don't know. But we have to all start to get on the same page that it is us and them. It's not left, right. It's up, down. And, and it's not up, down, like me up and you down. It's like these people who are, you know, at the top of the power pyramid of influence, the media, the top 100 companies in the world, the politicians, these people are intentionally making life hard for us. And until we all come together and say, dude, that black guy ain't my enemy. That white dude's not my enemy. Like that gay person is not my enemy. And we come together and we're like, bro, this is our country. This is, this is, this is our flag. This is not the flag of tyrants. This is the flag of free people. And if we all came together and just could have a conversation, which that's part of the censorship as well. They don't want anybody to have a conversation. That's why they closed the bars during COVID. Um, <clears throat> they create this, this, this powerful unity and it could be done peacefully that like just sucks the power out of their, out of their room. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
That's their worst. That's their worst nightmare. That's why they killed Martin Luther King. That's why they killed John F. Kennedy. They kill anybody who tries to even get close to unifying people because, dude, it disturbs their power structure. And we need a major disturbance in their power structure. We need all new politicians. We need all new leaders. We need people from the people, by the people, for the people. Not lifetime, generational, fifty-year uh, family heirloom lineage in the government Legacy stealing all emissions. our money. Yeah. yeah. Legacy emissions. Yeah. Uh, dude, we just got to get smarter than them, dude. It's real, man. I I just couldn't I just couldn't imagine someone telling me like, bro, because you're this, you'll never be that. Like like because I was born this way, you'll never be able to do that. Like think about that, bro. Think about who's saying that to our black American children. And I say ours because it is fucking our American children. These are not this is not just black children. This is white children also. And by the way, this woman, she looks pretty young. Mm -hmm. Don't you think? No experience. Okay. She was probably told her whole life that she is racist because she comes from white lineage. Okay. So, so her part of her viewpoint was formed on the opposite side of this telling black children that they'll never be anything, but also telling white people that they're going to have this amount, you know, that they're, they're evil basically. And these people carry shame around their whole life. So then they overcompensate. This person here truly believes for whatever reason that black people are not as capable as white people. And that's just simply not fucking true. They want it to be, they want people to believe that because if they believe that, then we create a situation of dependency and we create a situation of division and uh, resentment amongst the races, which helps the people in power. Yeah. What do you think, dude? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fucking disgusting. I think it also goes to, I mean, just going back to earlier, right? She probably also went to one of these Ivy League schools and has some fancy degree that she thinks she's entitled to. And she thinks she's smart and everybody She thinks else. she's fucking intelligent. You yeah. know, and like, but guess what? That's exactly what that affirmative action system creates too, right? Because you have these unprepared kids going into these Ivy League schools, getting these fancy degrees. Well, bro, did you read Michelle Obama's letter? Oh, you mean Mike? Well, I mean, dude, did you read it, though? She was like, I belonged. I belonged. I belong. Listen. Show me those SAT you, scores. You belonged if you <laughs> fucking got the scores everybody else got. Yeah, exactly. Show me those LSAT scores. Let's see them. Whip them out. They don't think she's whipping out. Bro, you know listen, what I'm saying? <laughs> listen, man. Barack Obama and Michelle Obama have done literally nothing but pray and destroy this fucking country. Pray mm -hmm. on and destroy. They've yeah. destroyed it. They have not done anything good for black people. They've not done anything good for white people. They've not done anything good for any people. Obama is a gifted orator that is pleasant to listen to. Okay. But you're starting to see that his world is collapsing because now when you see him come out, he's far more agitated than normal. Mm -hmm. He's snapping at people. He's, he's, he, you know, he's not the beloved Barack Obama anymore. He doesn't like it. He doesn't feel like he's in control. Well, he's not because people have woken up that this is a community organizer that was intentionally position to be president of the United States and then went in and did a number on everything that everybody gives a fuck about in this country. Yep. And and his wife having a what what have you done? What have you done? Like I mean she's done more than fucking Kamala probably, <laughs> but like that ain't saying much. Yeah. Guys, tell us what you think. That was headline number 3 it's time, Andy. All right. Our final segment of the show, as always, we have thumbs up or dumb as fuck. That's where we bring a headline up, we go through it, and uh, it'll get one of those two things. Now, Andy, let's let's go back a little bit. Okay, do you remember seeing a headline like this? Uh, chess player Hans Neiman denies using sex toy to help him beat grand champion. Mm -hmm. Right, the whole uh, anal yeah, butt anal, plug. Yeah, that's right. yeah, okay, all right. So uh, we took. We, I think that was a thumbs up before, right? So this guy, right, Hans. Okay. Let's see what he's done recently. Headline reads, federal judge throws out lawsuit filed by Chestar over cheating allegations. So this motherfucker tried to sue. The guy that lost? Yes, he tried to sue. Uh, a judge has dismissed a lawsuit filed by a 19-year-old chess grandmaster uh, who alleged his career was ruined by allegations that he had cheated. Last year, Hans Neiman sued former world champion Magnus Carlsen and the online chess organization, chess.com. He was seeking $100 million in damages for slander and libel. Uh, in a lawsuit filed in federal court in St. Louis, Neiman also accused Carlson and chess.com 
of violating antitrust laws by merging online playing platforms and refusing to let him play on them. Uh, On Tuesday, U.S. District Judge Audrey uh, Flesick uh, found Neiman's antitrust claims had no merit. She also dismissed libel and slander claims because she said she didn't have jurisdiction to oversee them. Uh, Singles Post Dispatch reported the lawsuit came again uh, after Neiman shocked the chess world by defeating Carlson at the Cynic uh, Field Cup last year in St. Louis, ending Carlson's world record unbeaten streak. Carlson accused Neiman of cheating and withdrew from the tournament. Uh, Andy, what, what do we got on this? Well, was it ever proven that he cheated? It was never proven that he did not. Yeah, but was it ever proven that he actually cheated? No. Well, I mean, shouldn't the burden of proof be on the people making the accusations? Yeah, I mean, you would okay. think. So if you make an accusation and you leave a dude sitting at a table and, it, and you can't prove that he cheated and then you ruin his career, shouldn't there be some sort of repercussions to that? Yeah, now, I mean, I, there's an argument for that. Now, listen, I'm not saying it's $100 million, but if I was representing him, I could make that case because now he's never going to get to play. I don't know how much chess tournaments pay out, right? Yeah. Maybe they do pay out better than I think. But now he's not going to get the endorsement deals. He's not mm. going to get the invited to the tournaments. He can't play the game that he spent all his whole life mastering. There's an argument to be made there. Yeah. I think that's interesting. Yeah, it, it sounds like she just dismissed it because of the jurisdiction. Yeah, it didn't sound like, yeah. So she, like, she threw I down could, the antitrust, but she said the libel yeah. slander claims she just doesn't have the jurisdiction. Yeah, and I, I uh, the antitrust for me feels like he's just throwing that shit out there because he's pissed off. But, you know, and there could be the other side of this, too. Maybe he did cheat, and he's only suing to try to appear that he did it. Yeah. So we don't really know what happened because it was never proven. My advice to this guy would be to probably uh, go out and play some more tournaments and reestablish your reputation and get back on track and um, and, and do what you got to do. Yeah. But uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised if you see this this lawsuit um, refiled, yeah, refiled or or transferred somewhere else, and, and we get a, a decision that's different on this because the reality is 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 that his reputation was hurt. Yeah. Okay. And people think he sticks shit up. Yeah, but butt. here here's what he doesn't understand. I can tell he doesn't understand this by him filing the suit. Oh, he's nineteen. Okay. Well, when you file lawsuits, there's this thing called discovery, right? And discovery goes both ways. So. If you accuse someone of doing something, they're allowed to sort of dig into what you got going on too. Mm. And that creates a scenario where more actual facts come out. And I'm not sure that this kid wants that to come out. Yeah. So if you're suing them to bluff, I'd be careful because you could end up like actually being caught and that could really fuck you forever. Yeah. So my advice to you might be just to leave it the fuck alone and go out and try to reestablish your shit. I, I don't know. know. I mean, yeah. we don't, because you, do you know if he did it or didn't do it? No idea. But plug has not been found. So well, I mean, what's his chess record since? What, what, what did OJ say? Well, hold on. <laughs> if you're the glove doesn't fit, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, they can't even find the glove. Well, I'm just saying. If, <laughs> no, for real, dude. Like, has this guy played anybody since then? I don't. I don't think so. You know, like, like, how about this? Why don't you play another grand champion? Uh, and you guys agree to play in your swimming trunks. And you agree to play in private so you don't have to be embarrassed about your, you know, vegan body or whatever the fuck you got going on, right? Vegan body. I'm just saying. (laughs) Um, But to prove that you're actually as good as what you... That should be a simple thing to prove. Yeah. Merit-based system. I don't know. There's a lot of angles to this, man. I I don't think we've heard the last of this. Yeah. I just love the fucking... I I love it. You know, we don't do gossip much on this show. But I'll gossip about anal butt plugs and chess. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's, a, that's a weird thing to want to gossip about. Hey, we've gossiped about worse. We have? Maybe. I don't know. Okay, we have. Where's the glove? Just I got your back. You know what I'm saying? Right. Anyway, um, this is Thumbs Maybe. Thumbs Maybe. Like, this is like, that's you know. a change up. You, now, have you seen Gladiator? Yeah. All right. Thank God. <laughs> so, you know how, like, when the Emperor's, like, out, like, you know. Mm-hmm. thumbs up or thumbs down this is thumbs maybe we're gonna see how this goes got it yeah all right well guys andy that's all i got yeah guys hey don't forget to let us know what you think in the comments uh of this special saturday episode 
Uh, keep an eye out for the new platform launching. Keep an eye out for the new MF CEO project coming out. If you're interested in personal development, most of the personal development content will be moved to that show. Let us know what you think in the comments. Click subscribe and uh, don't be a hoe. Share the show. <laughs>